Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is political theory, meaning, definition and its explanation. So, what is political theory? Let's have a look. Theory, when we talk about theory, it refers to a systematic set of knowledge. Sometimes it is used for speculation, conjectures or ideas. So theory means some kind of ideas, right? George Catlin says that the term theory is like a blank check whose value is its utility and the way in which it is used. Arnold Brackett regards theory as a proposal that is expressed in terms of some data and support some ideas. Political theory, when we come across, it refers to systematic knowledge of political phenomena. It offers ways and means to reform the demerits, I mean disadvantages of political phenomena. Political theory further refers to three types of statements, if we consider. Empirical statement that is based on observation, that is number one. Number two, logical statement that is based on reasoning. Number three, evaluation statement that is based on value judgment, the, the man are, you know, like the man are born free and equal. Now, let's consider some definitions. According to Sabine, in a broad sense, political theory is anything about politics or relevant to politics. But in a specific and narrow sense, it is the discipline investigation of political problems. David Held, another thinker, says that political theories are complex networks of concepts and generalizations about political life involving ideas, assumptions, and statements about the nature and purpose and key features of government, state, and society. Andrew Hecker refers to political theory as a combination of disinterested search for the principles of good state and good society, on the other hand, and a search for knowledge of political and social reality at the same time. George Catlin, one the thinker, says that political theory includes political science and political philosophy. So these are some of the definitions in regard to political theory. Now we'll be considering the characteristics or you can say advantages or merits of political theory. Political theory makes political science a unique discipline. A sound political theory is bound to offer a satisfactory understanding of all vital problems of political science. As Vladimir Lenin once says that without a revolutionary theory, there could not be a revolutionary hesitation. Stalin also opined that Theory alone could provide confidence and direction to communism. Thus, political theory is helpful for the public to know about the form of government and legitimacy of the rulers. It is related to state, government, and political institutions. Political theory again tries to understand, analyze, and explain the phenomenon of politics. It also attempts to reform by changing the merits, you know, demerits, sorry, in political life. Now, what is the nature of political theory and political thought? When we talk about the nature, we'll be considering two things together, political theory and political thought. Political theory, as we have learned, is a systematic explanation of politics. It focuses on state, government, political institutions, accompanied by their various activities and functions. 
According to Ernst Berger, political theory is the speculation of a particular thinker. It may or may not be related to a particular time. It helps in establishing a balance between facts, happenings, and human values. But political thought is thought about the state, government, problems, and their probable solutions. Look at the difference. It is offered by various thinkers, philosophers, and analysts. It is always connected to a particular time. For example, concept of philosopher king was Dove the Fence in Greece, offered by the great Greek political thinker Plato. Now let's see political philosophy and political theory. Political philosophy refers to love of wisdom and knowledge. It can rightly be defined as a study of wisdom. It is very comprehensive, which studies everything. It simply enhances our knowledge. It is very comprehensive, which studies everything. And it also studies political life of a human beings and tries to solve these questions like what should be the nature and objective of the state what is an ideal state what should be the basis of the state what should be the nature of liberty equality and justice it offers normative prescriptions about political life of man but political theory can be normative or empirical or Maybe both. Political theorists may offer different types of explanations on the basis of specific approaches and at different levels of generalizations. Now, we'll be considering political theory and political ideology. The objective of political theory is to understand politics in the most comprehensive manner. It tries to discover the general pattern and order in political facts, to explain those facts adequately and to construct rules of political action based on that analysis. Political ideology tries to evaluate distribution and exercise of political power and working of political institutions. It allows people to action and to mobilize political movements like communism, Marxism, Maoism, and many others, even as of today. It is a set of political beliefs, convictions, values, and ideas. On the other hand, political theory may or may not have ideological leanings. It may simply try to describe political reality without offering any judgment on the same. Now, Political theory and political science. Political science is a vast subject which includes political thought, political philosophy, political theory, political ideology, comparative politics, international institutions and politics, public administration, international law, etc. Traditionally, it deals with the study of the state and government, but after the Second World War, the behavioral thinkers project political science as a study of an activity or as a process. But then the post-behavioralist thinkers oppose the efforts of the behavioralists to make political science a value-free science. This political theory is different from political science, but related to it. Now, friends, let's see types of political theories. First, classical political theory. It primarily searched for an ideal state. It focused on nature and purpose of the state, nature of an ideal state and other political institutions, the basis of the authority of the state, problem of political obligation, relation between individual and the state. You know, this stage continued from Plato and Aristotle to 18th century. Next, modern political theory. It is also known as liberal political theory. It is focused on 
right, liberty, equality, justice, state, welfare, etc. Also, it dealt to its relation between law and liberty, law and morality, liberty and equality, rights and duties, justice and equality, role of state as police state or welfare state, etc. Next, Marx's political theory. Liberal theory was opposed by Karl Marx, Engels, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao Zedong of China. They argued for scientific socialism or Marxism. It was based on several theories like dialectical and historical materialism, economic determinism, class struggle, surplus value, withering away of the state, dictatorship of the proletariat, etc. Now, another type is behavioral political theory. By the 20th century and after the Second World War, American political thinkers like David Easton gave a scientific approach to study political science. These thinkers focused on human behavior, group theory of politics, power, influence, authority, legitimacy, political culture, political development, political socialization, political modernization, like many other aspects. They rejected the study of values and advocated the study of politics on the basis of facts. But by 1960s, behavioralism was opposed by post-behaviorism and the latter gave importance to values in the study of politics. However, post-behaviorism also did not indicate a return to the traditional approaches to study political science. So this is how political theory and its meaning and explanations go. From this video, you will be able to learn the basic concepts of political theory, right? And its advantages, disadvantages, types, and how it differs from other aspects of, you know, political science. So friends, with this, I conclude my lecture today. And I request you to kindly watch my other two channels. One is Dr. Mark and Psyche's talk on foreign affairs, wherein I deal with current issues in international politics. And second one is Dr. Mark and Psyche's talk on national affairs, wherein I deal with current effects, you know, on national politics. Thank you so much for watching me. Take care and bye.